If your iPhone 13 Pro isn't charging, it may be because the charging port needs replacing. In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace it. Start off by removing the two pentalobe screws from the bottom of the device. And then you're going to need to heat up the edges of the device to soften the adhesive that holds the screen in place. I use a heat mat set to 85 degrees C and a suction cup to help me lift the screen off. You may find that you don't have a heat mat. A heat gun or hairdryer will achieve the same effect, although it will take a little bit longer. With the suction cup attached to the bottom third of the phone, we're going to use a Dorco blade and we're just going to insert it in the gap between the edge of the screen and the chassis. You need to push down right on those edges and whilst you're lifting up with the suction cup, you're going to be sort of peeling back with the Dorco blade. Add a little bit of isopropyl alcohol to help you along with it and it's just a sort of peel back and pull up manoeuvre. Once you've separated it in enough like that, there'll be enough room to fit one of the little guitar picks in there. I'll carry on lifting with the suction cup, run some more alcohol down the edge, and then I'm going to very slowly run this guitar pick along this edge to separate the screen from the chassis. If you find that there's any resistance, just add a little bit more isopropyl alcohol. And if you do have a heat mat, I would recommend leaving it on there whilst you're removing the screen just so it stays warm. If you're using the heat gun you might find that you need to reheat it as you're going along and it may even help to have an assistant do that for you. Now that that's separated you might have just seen me run my pick along the edge that's just to pop the clips out and we can open it up just like opening a book from the front cover and we'll head over to the desk where we'll disassemble it further. You don't want to let the screen flop back all the way flat so the best thing to do is if you've used a suction cup like this just leave that attached and that'll act as a prop. Otherwise, you can use something like a mug, a nice heavy weighted object just to stop it from falling over. But for this one, I'm gonna leave the suction cup on there. Next, we're gonna detach the screen. This is held down under this little shield here. Well, it's got three screws, which are Y000 tri-wing screws. Take all three of those out and use tweezers to get the shield out of the way. Store everything that you remove safely for later and it's best to keep the screws organized because there is a lot of screws to remove during this process. Next, we're gonna use a plastic spudger to disconnect the battery and isolate power from the device. Then we can use the flat end of it to disconnect the screen connector. Moving up to the top shield now, there's a crosshead screw in the top right corner, another crosshead screw hidden behind the flex in the top left, and then two more tri-wing screws either side at the bottom of this little shield here. Once you've got those out of the way, then you can carefully lift the shield out. Just be careful because there's this little bit what sticks out here and it's easy to snag it on that cable. So just be careful removing that one and do the same again, store that safely for later. You can lift up the screen a little bit now and disconnect that flex cable. And that means that we can separate the screen and store that for reinstallation. Next, we're gonna work from the top all the way down. So there's two more trialing screws to remove for this other shield here. At this point, I would recommend using something like a magnetic little whiteboard so that you can keep your screws organized whilst you're removing everything. Then you can remove the shield. And what I find is best with this magnetic mat is just to lay everything that you remove right by the screws that you take out. And then you're gonna remember where they go later on. There's a standoff screw that needs to be removed just here. Then we've got the charging port cable and these other two connectors just down here. Peel that back. Next we've got the SIM tray that needs to be removed. What I try and do is keep it very systematic so I'm working from top to bottom and then when we get to the bottom area I'll work from left to right. So continuing working down this edge there are two more tri-wing screws holding this little antenna or coaxial sort of cable in place. Remove those two and you might see there's a little sort of grounding clip on that one as well. I can't remember if it needs to be took out. No it's attached so we're all right there. So that frees up this little cable here. Moving down to the bottom of the phone, we've got a crosshead screw on the left side of the Taptic engine. Another crosshead screw directly below that one. This shield, what I'm getting to now, can be a bit of a pain. Remove all the screws for it, which is three crosshead screws. Let's carry on moving across. We've got the top left of the speaker, which is held down by one crosshead screw. Another one on the right side of the lightning connector. And then we've got three more crosshead screws on this far right side of the loudspeaker. We should now be able to remove the loudspeaker from the chassis. 
it is stuck at the back here with a little bit of tape just peel it back store it safely for later now we'll go for the taptic engine that's held down with this fpc connector here and then one standoff screw in the top right of it that will allow us now to get that out of the way store it on your magnetic mat and then let's lift up this shield there's a little clip just in this bottom right hand corner of it and it just makes it a little bit awkward to get it out it's also stuck onto the back of the barometer sensor so it probably feels like there's a lot of resistance when you're taking that out just give it a little tug and it should come we you've got two more standoff screws either side of the lightning connector now remove those two if you tip the phone up you'll find another two crosshead screws holding the lightning connector to the chassis then using your tweezers i'm going to remove the microphone from this side here i've missed this little standoff screw and tri-wing screw in the corner as well so i better get those whilst i'm in this area and then you can use your tweezers to peel back the barometer and microphone on this side one more standoff screw holds the plastic plate in place and then finally i think we've got one more tri-wing screw just here let's get that plastic sort of little jig mold thing that holds the mic in uh, barometer in place it's always stuck to the bottom edge we'll now add some drops of isopropyl alcohol around the edges of the charging port and that's just going to soak in and make it a little bit easier to remove the most frustrating step about this one is that we need to take the battery out to do this is five percent skill and 95 percent luck whether you can get these tabs out in one but every time i record something they never come out easy that one wasn't too bad a little drop of isopropyl alcohol underneath it helps it's very easy to put too much in and it just sort of breaks down the adhesive go for the big tab next see if we can get that out in one if you notice that i'm pulling to the sort of side it just seems to make it a little bit easier and then i try and get as much surface area on the tweezers as possible i'm spinning it around it Keeping it nice and low as well is always a good idea. Wiggle it from side to side, and hopefully you manage to get it out in one. For the top ones, there's barely any adhesive holding it down. I always just squirt some isopropyl alcohol in there, and then use the black plastic stick under where I've already got it out, and it should come out pretty easily now, leaving behind the adhesive look. Once they're out of the way, get rid of the old adhesive. This is what I'm saying where it goes a bit naff with too much alcohol. I've deliberately flooded it with alcohol this top bit. So now that the battery is out, you can get underneath the charging port itself. I'm just going to sort of lift it up until it comes out like that. And then for the top end, it's just pulled out when I, it sort of springed out. But make sure that it's disconnected there and then you can just slide it underneath the logic board. That's the reason why we take this standoff screw out and the sim. It just means that the board can move a little bit so you can get underneath it easily. Now mop up any alcohol what was left behind. Make sure that it's nice and clean in there. And I can't stress this enough. The part that we use is a original, genuine, pulled, sometimes reconditioned, sometimes brand new, but always an original part. If you use aftermarket parts with this, it will cause a three minute boot loop, usually because the barometer has the wrong capacitors or resistors in there and it can't communicate properly with the pressure sensor causing a 180 second boot loop so just bear that in mind make sure that it's from a good source i'll leave a link in the description below if they're the reconditioned ones they usually come with these little bits of tape on them just peel back the peels on them and then when you're lining this up you'll notice that the microphone there there's a bit of flex cable just here that needs to slide under that plastic there so to help you line it up slide it under that plastic and the rest of it should follow suit if that's in place right push it down and then for the top bit of course we need to slide that under the board so fold it back on itself a bit slide it underneath make sure that it's connected before you start screwing anything back down and this is all good now i always start off because like i say alignment is very important with these charging ports so it goes into a very fixed point just here with the two long screws either side of the lightning connector then it's a memory game 
of matching the screws up to where you took them out. For that, I usually just go in reverse order to the way I took them out. So there was this standoff screw here, as well as that small tri-wing screw in that right-hand corner. Now we'll move over to the other side. You've got one more tri-wing screw that's uh, gonna be awkward to get into place because the cable's a little bit, not mangled, but just in the wrong place. It's a bit springy. Let's try that now. Once they're lined up, we can screw in that screw. Yeah, that's gone in all right. Let's get this guy in place as well now. That goes there, folds around that corner. And you've got two little tri-wing screws that hold that down there. Let's push the flex in and get it secured, shall we? It's been a bit awkward, this one. Very springy. And then while we're in the area, we might as well get that one attached. One more tri-wing screw here. Now we've got the little plastic clip to go in place. That wants to line up. There's like a little point on there just there so if you get that that sits in a little hole on the chassis you can get that in and then that was held down by this standoff screw once that's held down you can push the barometer sensor over actually scrap that don't fold them over yet put this standoff screw in first this will work better push them down a little bit line up that little metal shield i know my thumbs are in the way i've got awkwardly large thumbs um, and it's going to make what I'm doing look a bit awkward. So I apologise if they've got in the way a bit, but I'm basically putting pressure on the shield so that those springy microphone and barometer don't pop up. We'll get it secured down with that one crosshead screw there, and then it's not going to move look whilst we re-secure everything else. The stuff going back being the Taptic engine, first of all. So we'll get that laid in place and then reconnect the FPC connector single crosshead screw there the other one that goes in just here next up we've got the other standoff screw on the right side of the lightning connector another standoff screw just here and then the loudspeaker you should have about four or five crosshead screws that hold the loudspeaker in place now as well as this little grounding screw well the two little grounding screws in the bottom right corner one more crosshead screw that secures the loudspeaker to that standoff screw and finally loudspeaker to taptic engine last but no means least in terms of the charging port anyway we've got two crosshead screws in this very bottom left corner and the left hand side of the taptic engine now we'll use a proper adhesive to re-secure the battery down Push those down and then whack it in your phone. If you apply some pressure where the adhesive is, it makes sure that it secures down correctly and then make sure that the battery connector sits in properly. In this case it does, so we're going to just disconnect that real quick. Now we've got one more standoff screw here. The very small shield just here. That's held down by two tri-wing screws, if you remember. This was a long time ago now, wasn't it? Now I'm going to take a minute to remove the old adhesive from the chassis. Cut to the adhesive being removed now. So with the old seal removed, we've got a new one going in place. Line it up in the top left. It's an important step to do this. You could technically reuse the seal, obviously, if it's your personal device, but if you're doing this professionally for a customer, then it's very important to replace the seal. It's just the final part of making it a good job, really. So with the first film removed, I always leave the second film on there. We can bring the screen back, reconnect it just here, reconnect it at the top, and then finally reconnect the battery. You've got the small metal shield just here, and that's held down by three tri-wing screws. With those secured, we can move back up to the top, and we've got one last shield that sits in just like that. The tri-wing screws are the bottom two, and the crosshead screws are the top two. 
None of this repair is rocket science, but it does require some concentration. Make sure that you keep your screws organized and you should be all right. There's just one final layer of adhesive to remove. Go around it, fold the screen down, and pull it around from the back of there. Same at the bottom. Make sure that you don't forget to do this because it won't seal it right. I've just got a little bend on one of the ground pins there. Look, it'll bend that back. Fold the screen down, reattach it in the top, and then the rest of it will follow. Don't forget the SIM tray. And then it's always best to make sure that you turn this on by connecting it to the charging port. And we can see that it's now charging. I believe this one was actually in for a microphone issue rather than a charging port issue. But because those microphones are attached to the charging port, it requires full flex cable replacement. Don't forget to get your two pentalob screws back in the bottom. And then once the device turns back on, you can carry out full testing. With this now turned on, we can see that it's charging. We'll check the microphones out, but that is repair complete. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.